And then over here, I got these 26 times 9.5 for my eight inch rim. Good God, look at the difference between 11 and a half and nine and a half. That is ridiculous. All right, GoPro, you ready to get some action? Oh, I sure am. Well, DIY car guys and car girls, what do we have for the S10 today? Well, let me show you. First, we got this. And over here, we have the stock one. And this is the upgraded one right here. This guy has drilled and slotted. And I also put longer studs in there. So that way we can space the wheels out for this reason. And if you're wondering why I'm spacing the wheels out, let me show you. You probably can't see it, so let me illuminate the issue right there. Long tube headers. See where the tire is right there? This half inch spacer is installed on this one right here. So this side is done. We'll do the other side. But today we'll see exactly how much better just using a half inch spacer is. I'll let you guys know, you probably can't see it. Because when I was at the track last time, when I was trying to turn, people were giving me the stink eye because they acted like, you know, I was trying to hit them. I was like, man, I can't turn that much, get out my way. So today we're gonna put the spacers on there and see how much better that is. Burst, no spacer. So that's what we're doing today. So that side is installed. Where's the spacer at? Aha, there you are. All right, so here's the spacer and it's gonna go on like so. Ooh, I got it right the first time. Usually I'm messing up, putting in the wrong hole. Uh, someone mentioned about uh, these being, um, went on to get a uh, uh, concentric spacer, which means it fits over this guy right here. So if you notice when I put this on, it can go this way or that way. I'm not sure if, if this kind of spacer matters with the type of wheels that I have because I use Acorn um, um, lug nuts and these guys screw in and it goes to another spot on the wheel that centers the wheel on these studs right here. So they're not concentric uh, wheels. Like I said, I don't know crap Ola about spacers, but that was my guess that this little bit of play here and there, this small on the rotating mass, probably won't have an effect on the tire. We are going to find out. So, let me move this over to the side. And, oh, one more thing. Someone mentioned about my wide angle lens and all that. Hey, uh, I want you to see why I need a wide angle lens and it's fish eye, fish eye is cheaper. Here's the reason why. So let's see, see this right here? 
that's how much space in between this. And that's why I have a fisheye lens because my garage is super small. And the only non fisheye wide angle lens that has this equivalent is about $1,700. And you know what? That's not in the budget. So if you're wondering about that or whoever asked that question, I don't remember. That's the reason why I don't have one. Just cut me a little slack. So let's go ahead and put this tire on there in my limited space. And you'll see that why you need acorn style lug nuts with this, because that centers your tire. Look, see? See, it's not centered on those studs. So these guys go in. Let me go ahead and go there. So you notice when this tightens up forward, let me pull this up so I don't scratch the inside. Hold on. Right there. See? As you hit them up, hit them up light, of course. And now, as these tighten down, it centers the wheel on those studs. All right, I'll torque those to spec later on. All right, so I went ahead and torqued those down to 75 foot-pounds. And then over here, I got these 26 times 9.5s for my eight inch rims. Over there is the 10 inch with the 11 and a halfs. I'm hoping that these will work good just for bracket racing. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna be putting too much power down in a for practice racing, so I'm hoping that might work. If not, then I wasted money. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those on and get those off because those are my racing tires for nitrous or whatever else on the street. And these guys right here, like I said, we'll try them out just for bracket, see how it works. There we go. That should be easier. All right. Good God, look at the difference between 11 and a half and nine and a half. That is ridiculous. Hopefully they work good for bracket. If not, then they're gonna be burnout machines. All right, so both sides are on. And we'll do a couple of brake checks too, because we got this guy on there now. Well, I guess this guy off. So we're doing without any proportioning valve. I already made a couple of rips off camera. So now it's time to share with you guys on camera. Let me grab the GoPro, stick it inside the old truck, and we'll do the usual pulls out there on the street. Don't want to, don't want to do too many pulls because street uh, activity on these tires right here will definitely tear them up. They'll end up looking like these uh, Mickey Thompsons over here. Let me show you. So here we have the larger Hoosiers. You can see they, they look nice. I've been good with them. I haven't, I've only drove with them on the street, haven't been gunning too much. But if you see what happens after a while, look at these Mickey Thompsons, how they start to scale really bad. See that? Ugh. And they just start to not hook worth a crap. So I don't want the same thing to happen to the ones out there. So I'm just going to do a couple of hits for you guys on camera, and we'll see how good they work. All right, GoPro, are you ready to get some action? Oh, I sure am. You want to make some hits, YouTube? Oh, I do, Mr. GoPro. You going to hang on? Oh, I hang on all the time, baby. I'm ready for this.
Well, what'd you think, GoPro? Hmm. Well, that's not bad for a little punk ass tire. Nine and a half inches. You know what I mean? That's not even porn star worthy. Yeah, I think the same, same thing, man. It's not, not, not too bad. Not too bad at all. I think it'll work good for bracket. Usually, you know, I'll close out the video with a little something. I'm going to let Mr. GoPro close it out today, y'all. Don't forget to subscribe and like, y'all. Keep on wrenching. Peace.